I am your host, Ashira Nelson, and this is PBS Western Reserve Forum 360, where we have a global outlook from a local view. Maple Heights, Ohio is a suburban city located southeast of Cleveland. Maple Heights have approximately a population of 22,000 people. The city has a diverse population with a mi mix of racial and ethical backgrounds. My guest today is Mayor Blackwell. She is the mayor of Maple Heights who recently started her, her third term. That's right guys, her third election terms. She is also my mother-in-law. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm yes, happy to be here today. Yes, excited to finally have you as a guest. I'm excited, I'm honored to be here. I thank am. you, I'm happy to have you here. And just to share more of your story, um, you share your story so much on many different platforms. So I'm so happy that you came to share your story with Forum 360. I always we love to get a honored. chance to do that. Yes. yes. <laughs> we are so honored to have you. So we're going to jump right in. Um, sure. So again, congratulations on your reelection. Thank you. Thank you. I am so honored to have you as my mayor, oh, <laughs> as a resident of Maple Heights. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you became the first black mayor of Maple Heights? You know, it was really just a body of work, and I would say that it was people noticing you when you don't even realize they're okay. noticing you. It's the work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the work will choose you because people will say, you know what, mm. um, I really like the way she gets things done. Okay. And so I had an early encounter with the then mayor, Mayor Lansky, oh, my predecessor, okay. through my daughter, actually, who was modeling for American Girl Dolls. Um, their pediatric cancer, and he was a survivor of cancer. Oh, um, ended okay. up succumbing to cancer my first year in office. But through that relationship, I reached out for funders to help me buy a table, support the girls in their oh. fashion show. My daughter also was chosen for a leadership program, People okay. to People, and I reached out again. And so we just created a relationship. Oh, okay. And through that relationship, he encouraged me to run for city council. And that was in 2013. It was not a successful mm -hmm. campaign, but it was a well-run campaign. Okay. One that got me noticed. And so when he decided not to seek re-election, he reached out and said, I'd love for you to run for mayor. Wow. Interesting. Yes, it was. I'm like, hmm, haven't thought about politics. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do before politics? I actually was a tax professional. Okay. I worked at an uh, international accounting firm, Deloitte. It was Deloitte and & Touche, and then mm -hmm. it became Deloitte. Um, but we were sold, a part of our practice was sold off because of Sarbanes Oxley. Mm -hmm. And so I was in a consulting practice, property okay. tax. So consulting practices, income franchise, sales and use were sold off. But I stayed in the tax profession, spent 16 years wow. doing um, property tax consulting work. So I had a strong business background. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I worked in banking, which is now known as Key Bank. I worked for the hospital, okay. the university hospitals, working for uh, the, one of the chief executive officers. So I've been in business, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd say at an executive level for a long time. So very transferable skills to the mayor's office. So let's talk about those transferable skills. So what skills, what, what are some of the main skills you feel like you were able to kind of transfer over from like corporate America to mm -hmm. now? You know, I don't think people realize that municipalities are businesses. Mm -hmm. Maple Heights is almost a $50 million business. And so um, there are three branches of government, as you know. There's executive branch, which as, as the mayor, I'm the executive branch. There's a le legislative branch, okay. which is city council. And there's a judicial branch. I have okay. the law director and the law department that help us, you know, enact legislation and mm -hmm. follow ordinances. And we're governed by a city charter. We were okay. incorporated in 1915, so we have a charter that's over 100 years old. Wow, okay. And that guides our, our laws and the way we, departments run and the way we respond to lawsuits, uh, new legislation yeah. through the judicial branch. So that's very important. But as the executive, it's my job to bring in revenue mm -hmm. and manage the expenses. The city was in fiscal emergency when I took office. Oh, okay. Almost $3 million taken over by the Ohio State Auditor's Office. So I walked into wow. a deficit. <laughs> and, you know, we have limited sources of revenue. Our largest source of revenue is income tax. People okay. working, paying income tax, followed by property tax. Mm -hmm. 
We get a small portion of that, though, because that um, funds schools, libraries, yes. mental health services, parks. I understood that part well because yeah. I spent 16 years okay. in property tax consulting. And then there's the humanity portion of it, and that's taking care of people. And I'm a woman of great faith. Mm -hmm. So uh, went through Catholic school education, understood the importance of service and taking care of God's people. So it was my own personal convictions, okay. my own strong faith, and then understanding numbers, being comfortable with numbers. Mm -hmm. All my decisions are directed by my finance report. And I don't think that had been done before. No oh. disrespect to my mentor, my predecessor. Yeah. Okay. But the first thing I did when I won is I got the finance financial statements. Yes. And between November and January <laughs> swearing in, I studied and it's it's fun accounting. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, how yeah. much is in streets, how much is mm -hmm. in buildings. And I made sure people stuck to that. And then I made all of my directors learn their budget. What is the mm. cost center or responsibility yes. center, business terms? And how much money do you have to spend on tires? So right. when you put a PO <laughs> through and you say you need, they had blanket POs. So the service department put $10,000 blanket PO for tires. Yeah. Do you need $10,000 just because it's in the fund? Let's look at utilization. Let's right. look at trends. Do you mm -hmm. really need $10,000 of tires? And so when my directors became responsible for their own budget, I saw a different, wow. a different behavior with POs. Okay. And we didn't start having carryover balances Very because nice. I helped them to manage their balances. Very so nice. that came from understanding business, mm -hmm. understanding revenue, and nice. spending only what you have. What is your not a operating income? And then what are our assets? Our assets are our residents and our city buildings and our equipment and talent, which is, of course, mm -hmm. is it's uh, not the tangible, yes. but hiring the people that can do the job. A lot of the employees I had were long employees that were related to oh, someone okay. in the administration, a previous elected official, maybe they worked on a campaign. So I didn't have the skill set I yeah. wanted. Okay. But as I raised the bar, mm -hmm. um, some people were able to, to stay yes. in their positions and some people moved on okay. or they were reassigned. But that's the business decisions you have okay. to make. I Don't make that. you popular, but it makes you successful. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that was hard. <laughs> okay, so as you begin your new term, what are your top priorities for the city of Maple Heights? Well, it's been eight years. And so I'd say the first eight years, I have not been the mayor. Okay. I've been the mayor. I've been the finance director. Okay. <laughs> so I had a finance director I had to leave and I had to finish payroll mm -hmm. and we had to get POs done for end of year closing. I've been our own economic development director. The mm. person that goes out and creates relationship with businesses and yes. bring new businesses in and also weather through the, through the storm of how you're going to replace a vacant space, finding a new yes. business for a business that right. may have left. And because it's so expensive, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, the benefits for professionals, that specialty economic okay. development, the first six years I did it myself. Okay. And so this term, I just want to be the mayor. Okay. <laughs> I've got the staff that I want, mm -hmm. talented, competent people. So I get to just actually be the mayor. Very so nice. I can come here yeah, on a Monday morning exactly. and do an interview. <laughs> Um, and so, but with being the mayor, I want to focus on the things I've not been able to attain. Okay. And that's youth engagement. Yes. I was so busy doing the business and saving yeah. Maple Heights. And I want to tell you that we've grown. The 2000, the most recent uh, census, which mm -hmm. was, was it, 2022, we're 25,000. 25,000? We've grown. We're a big wow. city with new I think I was homes. so stuck on like 20, yes. 2022 for so long. Yeah, we, well, you know, that's every incredible. 10 years is a... Is a um, is a census, so in okay. 2022, new census. But then that's Very too nice. with underreporting mm -hmm. because everybody wants to be counted. So that's about 70% reporting. But really, by police calls, mm -hmm. which I look at, ambulance runs, we're more like 25,000. Very nice. And we have new homes we're building on some info housing. Mm -hmm. We're in 2008 during the foreclosure. A lot of things were torn down because they just oh, yeah. were beyond repair, yeah. really beyond repair. And so we're building on those lots with some developers. Our, our population's growing. And you can see that, too, in the school enrollments. But this year, I want to focus on um, youth engagement. There's a lot of support for our singers in okay. Maple Heights. We have a singer center building. Oh, yeah. We've got three new singer vans, which mm -hmm. I worked hard to get new vans. We have home-delivered meals. We have congregate meals. But we don't have the same yeah. infrastructure commitment to youth. And that's problematic for me. Yes. Being a mom of three, oh, yeah. a grandmother of five. I know it firsthand. Summer comes, spring break comes, Christmas. Yes, what do the kids fast. do? 
myself, I have to take my daughter outside of Maple oh, Heights. Oh, okay. Um, which you do as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. to engage in those in, in those activities. I mean, she went to Hudson for swimming classes. Yes. She went University Circle for Science Cat. She went to Highland Hills University. I'm sorry. Uh, what was it? Tri C for culinary skills. But all of those enrichment youth yes. opportunities were outside, of, and they had to. You had to pay for them. Yes, and a good I'm big on, re yeah. on being a, fin a finance professional, not at the level you are, but understanding finances. Mm -hmm. People are looking for an ROI. They want to yes. return on their investment. Absolutely. That's not just the police call coming when they call, mm -hmm. or EMS or the fire calling when they fall and can't get up, or the house is on fire. That means that I can access these services Absolutely. in my own community. So if I'm really going to give them a full return on their investment, mm -hmm. I have to address youth engagement. That would be Been trying to get nice. the swimming pool back open. It was closed mm -hmm. because of fiscal emergency. For three years, I had the spray grounds free. Yes, which we use the service. We use the spray grounds. Yes. It was very nice. Yeah. So uh, the capital budget comes up every year. Mm -hmm. So this capital budget, I have applied for playground equipment to redo all seven playgrounds. My son, oh. I have a younger son, who <laughs> said, you know, we need playgrounds. And I said, OK. Yes. And so we will know probably, you know, I think it's in the Senate right now. Okay. And hopefully we can do all the playgrounds. Fingers We've crossed. We've redone our major big park, Stafford Park. We put in a storybook trail. Um, that is a program that, that really uh, lends itself to First Lady DeWine's uh, Imagination Library. Okay. Can go through the park and yes. read a book. And every three months, the library changes the books out. Very nice. Um, we have a fitness trail. Okay. And so we're just doing a lot in the park mm -hmm. that we have. We have a boys league. Okay. Um, we have a partnership with the schools. They use it for girls softball. So we're doing a lot, but I want to formalize program and update the equipment. Okay. To drive that point home as we conclude that part, and one of my parks, the slide was broken. Okay. It was, it was damaged. And going down, a kid cut their leg. That's, oh, that's huge. Yeah. That's how old that equipment is and dangerous. Yeah. We want safe, durable, mm -hmm. bright. It, it attracts yes. people to the, bright, they see a beautiful bright. new slide. That's something yeah. that's old. And we repainted and mm -hmm. fixed up, but it just needs to be redone. So yeah. I'm hopeful that this capital budget, Let's that our, our applications are approved and we can replace playground equipment, all parks. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I want to be the mayor and do the things that touch the people, I'm closer yes. to the people, I'm not in the office pushing the numbers, mm -hmm. doing the work, but I'm a visible mayor and I'm a mayor to be able to do some things that are very memorable, value added, and I'm truly, truly focused on giving our residents a return on their investment. Very nice. I like that. I am looking forward to, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> we can move forward with the parks. Yeah. My girls will absolutely love that, oh, which you I know. know I know, you I know. Pick them up, take them to the park, and it yeah, will be Yeah, we have to go nice. outside of the city, and that's absolutely. that's not okay. That's right. not okay. Right. People, you know, do... Their home is their sanctuary, and they yes. can't wait to get home. A lot of residents, I, did, I started a, uh, a beautiful yard campaign three mm -hmm. years ago, and they all like are competing. It just changed the whole yes. trajectory. Like, I want one of those signs. So, and when I meet these people, because I personally deliver them, they love their home. Some of them are in Maple Aww. Heights, third generation, 30, 40 years. They're close to downtown, they're close to some national parks, and they love, and it's affordable. Mm -hmm. With value, real estate value appreciation, property taxes going up. We're still an affordable community. Yes. It's not affordable for a lot of people who are working class to move anywhere else. So they're trying yes. to make their home work, and I have to help them by making sure they have what they need in their community. Absolutely. So I am your host, Ashira Nelson, and this is PBS Western Reserve Forum 360. Today my guest is Mayor Blackwell of Maple Heights, sharing her story, her vision for the city of Maple Heights. So let's just jump back into some other questions. So sure. how do you plan to promote economic development and job growth in a city? We have a lot of partnerships. Okay. I hired a, uh, this is my second economic, formal economic development officer. He has a, a master's in American Planning Association. Oh, wow. So there okay. is a specific skill set. We, for two years, worked with Cuyahoga uh, County Community College, other mm -hmm. communities to create a new chamber of commerce, not just a Maple oh. Heights chamber of commerce, okay. Skyhoga East, it's like six cities. Okay. Last week we were with North Randall. The first launch was in Maple Heights at a, a new place called Paragon. And so with that chamber of commerce, which historically have been where businesses connect mm -hmm. over lunches, share practices, share products, oh. 
Wow, okay. It's for nine months now, and that's been really, really significant. Nice. Dollar Bank was a big investor. Mm -hmm. um, we have local insurance companies. We probably have 20 businesses, and this is something they Very asked nice. for, so we've delivered. That really does advance economic mm -hmm. development. We find out about, a, I'm keeping a list of available properties. Yes. People say, I want to move my business oh, to yeah. Maple Heights. Mm -hmm. I've got to help them find that vacant space mm -hmm. right away. Connecting and reaching out to owners of properties that have been vacant. How do we help you oh. move this forward? So we've really okay. intentional, been very, very intentional in outreach. We go to grand openings. We mm -hmm. do small business Saturdays, something that. we yes. haven't done. Chagrin Falls is known for small business Saturdays, oh. so I really got involved I like that. in bringing that back two years yeah. ago. I literally go to the businesses, wish them Merry Christmas, very give them nice. the information, and let them know we're going to promote their business. We have okay. a list of businesses on our social media, mm -hmm. engaged a social media professional. We were not on social media. Okay. So we have all those platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, the website, which we're redoing because I heard mm -hmm. it wasn't user-friendly. Okay. Very responsive to feedback. Very nice. And so we post every day. Okay. We say happy Easter, <laughs> you know, have a blessed Memorial Day. You know, we want to be present and relevant so people can find us and really see what we're doing. Very nice. So what are some new businesses that have come to Maple Heights? Oh, my gosh. We have a, uh, we have Red Velvet Cupcakes. Okay. They had been, um, they used to live in Maple Heights, but they moved out of Maple oh. Heights. And then they are in Richmond Mall, and then Richmond Mall changed. Oh, then yes. they had a kiosk I at Beachwood Mall, right? Oh, yeah. And yes. so now they're okay. in uh, Maple Heights I itself. I absolutely okay. love their Sam Red Velvet Silk, Cupcakes. Sam who is a local radio okay. personality, had chicken and fish restaurants, uh -huh. and about four years ago, he says, I want to come to Maple Heights. Very nice. So we have a small business grant that we help with businesses, and so we work with the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and we have a forgivable grant. The city has a matching fund. If you hire one person, you have to hire someone. Okay. And so we oh, have Sam Silk with that grant city. to open um, Sam Silk's Lounge, and he brings yes. in national recording artists, mm -hmm. and he brings in... Um, uh, comedians, very, very successful. It's become a place for local elected officials to have yes. fundraising events. Mm -hmm. um, we have, will be opening the, uh, cutting the ribbon to a new laundromat concept, okay. Wave Max. A gentleman oh. lives right down the street in a village, just down the street. His wife's an attorney. And he wants to open this Wave Max. It's a coilless operator. Okay. The former Payless at Southgate. Yes. It's going to be, be there? It's going to be there. Very uh, nice. We have a uh, Journey of Barber School. Uh -huh. We have a gentleman that took an Citizens bank on Broadway and turned into a salon and spa. Very nice. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Very it is nice really, space. really beautiful. Uh, Pregnant with Possibilities, which is an organization, a nonprofit organization that addresses black infant mortality, oh. um, has moved into a wonderful space in Southgate where uh, moms can get wipes and there's education wow. so that we can okay. bring our babies to a full term and really reduce the number of black infant deaths. Okay, we're, and where's that located in Maple Heights? It is right the behind Home Depot and South Creek Park Boulevard, oh, pregnant with possibilities. Okay. So they've okay. done a lot. In 2022, we had a year of no black infant deaths. Yeah, okay. I mean, Very we nice. were one of the highest, similar to a third world country. And I've got Very hospitals, nice. you know, I've got South Point mm -hmm. and Morris was on the road. I had Bedford Hospital before they closed. There's Marymount, Gar and yet I have one of the highest numbers of black infant mortality deaths. So partnering with First Year Cleveland, organization associated with Case Western Reserve, mm -hmm. Pregnant Possibilities has helped us really focus in on how do we reduce yes. those numbers and prevent that tragedy for families. Yeah. And so we, we, and then there's a announcement I'll be making in the next two weeks a national coming company is coming with a payroll of over a hundred thousand dollars. So we'll be cutting well, the ribbon and making that announcement. That in It'll be in cranes. <laughs> and it's a big deal. Very it's a nice. big deal. So we, this is what we do. I spend more of my time now that I have the professionals mm -hmm. working directly with the uh, economic development director. And I do a lot of traveling, mm -hmm. a lot of networking. I was at an event and someone said, you we want to come to your city. So we're yes. meeting next week. And I am a public relations, corporate communications. Mm -hmm. A professional, and so I tell people in addition to me and the mayor and the safety director, uh -huh. so police and fire report to me. I'm a salesperson. Yes, I am always selling the city. Very nice, very nice. On platforms like this, mm -hmm. in interviews, I serve on like 12 boards. I don't serve on 12 boards because I want to run all right. over the city, <laughs> but Maple Heights is at the busy. table, and so Maple Heights continues to be front and center. Those have turned into significant opportunities. Very nice. I love hearing the idea that 
businesses, people want to come to Maple Heights. They want to come to Maple Heights. I mean, honestly, that should be like the big, biggest yeah. honor. People like, don't realize our location. I mean, we're so mm -hmm. close to highways. And we have a, a we have a, a, a rail that runs through. That's why this company's coming. Because they do oh. a lot of their shipping. And the rail is right there, you know, in Norfolk Southern. And so having rail and highway, not driving 20 minutes to the city, not, which, where yes. do you want to go? 271, 77, yes. 480. That's our location, that's nice. our lo you know, real estate location, location, location. Mm -hmm. We check the boxes. Very nice. We check the boxes for location. As a young homeowner, it's very important for me to be by a freeway. Yes. <laughs> yes. I needed to be able to get to places in 15, 20 minutes. I yes. want to be able to get downtown. Yes. If I want to drive to Akron, wherever I want to go, I need to be able to get there. People don't realize, uh, second to Garfield Heights, we're the closest southeast community to the mm -hmm. west side. Rockside, and you're right in the Seven Hills or Parma. Man, we're, we we're 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 the closest. When you go off the highway, you're gonna hit Garfield Heights and Maple Heights. We're the closest east southeast mm -hmm. to the west side. Very nice. So location's been very very helpful in our economic development initiatives. Yeah. So what uh, role does technology play in improving the city services? I would say we need to be visible. We've okay. got our story out. So that's why it was so important in making sure we have the right pla mm. social platforms. Yes. The website wasn't doing that. Yeah. I capture shares, what's the engagement? You can measure oh, yeah. the level of engagement. So I know that my website needs to be updated okay. because just it's too hard to find. Mm -hmm. It has to be user friendly. It also gives me data to mm -hmm. know where I should be focusing oh, good my point. attention yeah. to. You know, how many, so every month I get a report from uh, Realtors Association, how many homes are selling? What is the meaning in listing price and what it sells for and how many oh. days is on the market? Okay. Because that's my biggest asset. We're a bedroom community, mm -hmm. so we have over 9,000 housing units. Maple Heights is, I want to leave you, I want to make sure people understand this while I have this time. We're the second largest entering suburb. Okay. Garfield Heights, 29,000. Maple's almost 25,000. Warsaw Heights is 13,000. Oh. North Randall is less than 1,200. Okay. Island Hills is maybe 900. Um, Bedford is like 11,000, and Bedford Heights is barely 10. We're huge. Wow. We're yeah. huge. People you don't realize how big we are. Yeah. We're, Even living there. We're the I double the size. It doesn't feel right. like it because it's our home. It, it does. Just, when I, the yeah. amount of work it feels like. Well, it. So, <laughs> but bet. that data helps me know that. And so I have all of this real estate wow. because we're so big. That data lets me know how much more do I need to engage with, with agents, what programs right now, we're putting a home repair, start home repair grant, oh, I made 41 grants last nice. year. I don't wanna just cite for broken yeah. steps and caving and roof, I wanna help. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to give exterior home grants so we can maintain that real estate. We did a study with five other cities maybe five years ago, and people won't believe this. You know what our housing grade came in is a B. Oh. Maple Heights is a B. You have those wow. spots where it's not, but we're a B. Oh, that's in, that's very and nice. And I have the data, you know, so they put, wow. but that data helps me when I am competing with another community, mm -hmm. saying we have, we have this housing and it's yes. in good shape. And so a lot of investors, which I'm trying to manage investors yeah. versus homeowners. Yeah. But it is, we're still able to make homeownership a dream come true in Maple Heights because our home, there's, it's good stock mm -hmm. and it's affordable. Nice. So we're down to our last two questions. Sure. So what message do you have for the residents of Maple Heights as you embark on this new third term? Continue to believe. Okay. But it's important to engage. I'm one person. Yes. I have over 100 employees. Mm -hmm. I have 25,000 residents. I serve on 12 boards. And it's to bring back resource, to bring back knowledge, to implement, bring back innovation. But I need help. Okay. And engagement means plugging in where there is a place for citizen engagement. People don't realize, this census revealed that the medium age in Maple Heights is 42. Wow. Young people live that in Maple Heights. That has changed. Yes. So what was it before that? Because I, I know that. No, because, you know, but oh. it, I wanted to say probably 60 because we had such an elderly high. population. Yeah. But when I got my data from the census, the medium wow. age in Maple Heights is 42. I have a young city. Oh, yet yeah. the people that serve in local government mm -hmm. are 50 and over, including myself. We need young people. So that, that public policy, mm -hmm. that agenda, that business re, uh, attraction and retention, bringing in homeowners reflects the people who have yes. the majority age. A lot of young people have moved away, have come back mm -hmm. to take advantage of the affordable real estate, 
their housing stock and be close to family and take care of family mm -hmm. as we get older, right? Absolutely. And so having my family close, I had a knee surgery. They're a moment away. I forgot something. I left with a pot on the stove. I was at church, <laughs> yes. like, can you go turn the, you know, it's, yes. you know, and that's, as we get older, there's less of a reason for us to be so estranged. You want to be yeah. in your children's life. And so you'll see ethnic families, they stay close. Very true. They don't Very move far true. away. So they, mm -hmm. they are that additional child care provider, mm -hmm. mentor, motivator, supporter when they're sick. Absolutely. And so that's happening in Maple Heights. A lot of young people have moved back to Maple Heights. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have this young age. So I want people to realize we're a young city. Yes. Old people are running it, but there are opportunities and they should be a part of the local government. Thank you to our guest, Mayor Blackwell, for sharing her excitement, her goals for the future of Maple Heights. I am your host, Ashira Nelson, and this is PBS Western Reserve Forum 360. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.